chapter fourteen of recollections and letters of general robert e lee by robert e lee jr this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter fourteen an ideal father letters to mildred lee to robert to fitzhugh interviewed by swinton historian of the army of the potomac improvement in grounds and buildings of washington college punctuality a prominent trait of its president a strong supporter of the y m c a my sister after the christmas holidays went from ashby to baltimore cousins george and eleanor goldsborough taking her with them to their town house i think my father always wanted his daughters with him when they were away he missed them their love care and attention the next letter i find is to mildred in baltimore lexington virginia january twenty seventh eighteen sixty seven my precious daughter your letter to your mother gave us the satisfactory information of your continued good health for i feared that your long silence had been caused by indisposition of body rather than that due to writing i hope you will not let so long an interval between your letters occur again for you know i am always longing to hear from you when i cannot see you and a few lines if only to say you are well will prevent unpleasant apprehensions i am delighted at your increased bodily dimensions and your diminished drapery one hundred and twenty-eight avoirdupois is approximately a proper standard seven more pounds will make you all right but i fear before i see you the unnatural life which i fear you will lead in baltimore will reduce you to skin and bone do not go out to many parties preserve your simple tastes and manners and you will enjoy more pleasure plainness and simplicity of dress early hours and rational amusements i wish you to practise you must thank cousins eleanor and george for all their kindness to you and remember me to all friends if you see your uncle marshall present my kind regards to him and my best wishes for his health and happiness i hope you will see robert i heard that he stayed at mr edward dallam's when in baltimore but do not know whether he will return there from linwood i was sorry to hear that you lost your purse perhaps the finder was more in want than you are and it may be of service to him and you can do without it a little money is sometimes useful you must bear in mind that it will not be becoming in a virginia girl now to be fine or fashionable and that gentility as well as self-respect requires moderation in dress and gaiety while her people are suffering she should practise self-denial and show her sympathy in their affliction we are all pretty well your poor mother suffers more pain than usual during this inclement weather your sister is devoted to the snow and ice and agnes is becoming a very good housekeeper she has received a letter from a gentleman whose judgment she respects recommending her to acquire that useful knowledge and assuring her that it will not only promote domestic happiness but will add greatly to connubial bliss this is a great encouragement to her our young friends the law students and cadets all inquire after you and wish for your return mrs mcelwee and mrs white also send their particular regards and colonel reed who seems to be failing fast sends his love and hopes that you will soon return you know that is my wish and hope so whenever you are ready to return you will know that i am waiting to receive you i will leave your mother and sisters to give you all domestic news tell annette i have been looking for her in every stage since her letter last fall and that i hope for her arrival daily nipper is well and endeavours by stern gravity to repress the frivolity of baxter all unite in much love and i am as ever your father r e lee miss mildred lee just after the intermediate examinations he writes to mildred again lexington virginia february sixteenth eighteen sixty seven my precious daughter i have wished to answer your letter of the second for some days but have not been able the intermediate examinations which were in progress when it arrived continued ten entire days and since their termination the necessary arrangements for the resumption of studies and the reorganization of the classes have occupied all my time not devoted to other pressing matters 
the students generally passed very creditable examinations many of your friends were distinguished the ordeal through which the higher classes passed was as severe as any i have ever witnessed colonel johnston footnote william preston johnston the son of general albert sidney johnston who fell at shiloh he had recently been elected to the chair of history and literature at washington college End note. has arrived and entered upon his duties he is living at the hotel with his wife and six sweet little children being unable to procure a house and the college being too poor to build one for him we have other professors also houseless robert has returned to his broken-back cottage though he confesses to having enjoyed great pleasure during his visit to baltimore he dwells with delight upon his intercourse with the mrs Blank, whom he considers angels upon earth without wings his account of them increases my desire to get them to virginia miss Blank once promised me to have fitzhugh tell her i will release her from her engagement if she will take rob he was also much gratified at being able to spend a week with you and i am getting very anxious for your return the winter has passed the snow and ice have disappeared and the birds have returned to their favourite resorts in the yard we have however a sea of mud around us through which we have to plunge but i hope the pleasant air and sun now visiting us will soon dissipate it i am glad you are enjoying yourself among such kind friends but do not remain too long as you may detain cousins eleanor and george from the eastern shore markey has sent me a likeness of you on porcelain from the negative taken by the celebrated plecker which she carried with her to philadelphia it is very good but i prefer the original everybody seems anxious for your return and is surprised you can stay so long from your papa may god bless and keep you my dear child is the constant prayer of your devoted father r e lee before mildred returned to lexington she received one more letter from my father in which he advises her of the two routes to lexington and tells her some college news lexington virginia february twenty three eighteen sixty seven my precious daughter agnes wishes you to purchase some articles for her and your mother and sister may have some commissions which i fear will reduce your purse to an inconvenient collapse i therefore send a cheque for blank dollars which i hope will enable you to gratify their wishes and serve as a reserve for your own wants i hope you are well and passing your time profitably as well as pleasantly the cadets are under the impression that you are at the patasco institute and will expect to find you on your return more agreeable than ever they are labouring so industriously in mental culture that they believe every one is similarly engaged i went last evening to the celebration of the anniversary of the washington society and was much pleased with the speeches it was held in the methodist church which was filled to overflowing the institute and ann smith female academy were represented your sisters were present and as they were both absent from breakfast this morning i fear so much learning made them sleepy they were also at a cadet hop on the twenty first and did not get home till between two and three a m on the twenty second i suppose therefore they had splendid times and very fresh society we were somewhat surprised the other morning at mrs grady's committing matrimony i missed at our chapel exercises captain grady and our acting chaplain but did not know at the time what prevented their attendance i heard afterwards that they had put the happy pair in the stage and sent them on their way rejoicing she is now mrs richard norris and has gone to baltimore it will be but fair now that captain grady should go to baltimore and bring us a young lady from there in return for his mother if you see miss armistead ask her to be ready on short notice as we are a people of few words in this region and proceed in all matters in a business-like way agnes i suppose has told you of all matters of gaiety and fashion she has no doubt too kept you advised of the progress of young baxter and of the deeds of thomas the nipper they are both flourishing and are much admired the roads are so muddy that my evening rides have been suspended and i see nobody 
you must write me when to expect you the stage from staunton now crosses during the night and when the roads are favourable arrives about two a m when the roads are unfavourable it gets in generally in time for an early breakfast the canal boats have resumed their trips now so you will have a choice of routes from richmond if you conclude to go there all unite with me in much love and i am always your father r e lee from lexington i had gone to baltimore for a short visit and had spent a week with mildred at the home of our cousin mr george washington peter near ellicott city soon after getting back to my farm i received the following letter from my father still trying to help me along in my work lexington virginia february eighth eighteen sixty seven my dear son i was very glad to learn from your letter of the thirty first ult that you had enjoyed your visit to baltimore for i feared when you left us that you might have a visit from your shaking enemy i trust however that he has now left you never to return still be prudent and watch his approach closely i hope you may be able to procure some good mules in richmond as it is a matter of importance to your operations if you can get the lime delivered at ten cents i do not know a more economical application to your land i believe you will be repaid by the first crop provided it acts as i think it will of this you must judge and i can only say that if you can accomplish it and wish to try i can send you three hundred dollars and will send it by draft to you or to any one in baltimore that you will designate as soon as i hear from you i commend you for not wishing to go in debt or to proceed faster in your operations than prudence dictates i think it economy to improve your land and to begin upon the system you prefer as soon as possible it is your only chance of success so let me know i have to write in haste as the examination is in progress and i have to be present george and robert both came up to-day in the subjects in which they are respectively weakest so give them your good wishes i received yesterday a letter from mildred regretting your departure from baltimore and expressing the pleasure she derived from having been with you even a short week i hope she will continue well and return to us soon we are all about as you left us the weather has moderated and the ice disappeared from the river though the boats have not yet resumed their trips mud predominates now instead of snow wishing you all happiness i am your affectionate father r e lee robert e lee jr the robert and george mentioned here were two of his nephews whom he was educating at the college the sons respectively of his brothers sidney smith lee and charles carter lee they were members of his household and were treated as his own family to my brother fitzhugh he writes at this time the following chiding him for his extravagance in a christmas gift and asking him for some data of the movements of his command it is full of good advice encouragement and affection lexington virginia february twenty sixth eighteen sixty seven my dear fitzhugh you must not think because i write so seldom that you are absent from my thoughts i think of you constantly and am ever revolving in my mind all that concerns you i have an ardent desire to see you re-established at your home and enjoying the pleasure of prosperity around you i know this cannot be accomplished at once but must come from continuous labour economy and industry and be the result of years of good management we have now nothing to do but to attend to our material interest which collectively will advance the interests of the state and to await events the dominant party cannot reign for ever and truth and justice will at last prevail i hope i shall be able to get down to see you and rob during the next vacation i shall then have a more correct apprehension of existing circumstances and can follow your progress more satisfactorily i was very much obliged to you for the nice eyeglasses you sent me xmas and asked your mother and the girls to thank you for them which i hope they did i fear they were too nice for my present circumstances and do not think you ought to spend anything except on your farm until you get that in a prosperous condition we have all now to confine ourselves strictly to our necessities 
while you are your own manager you can carry on cultivation on a large scale with comparatively less expense than on a small scale and your profits will of course be greater i would commence a system of progressive improvement which would improve your land and add steadily to your income i have received lately from fitz lee a narrative of the operations of his division of cavalry i requested custis to write to you for a report of your operations during the winter of eighteen sixty three and four down to april eighteen eighteen sixty five how are you progressing with it i know the difficulties of making such a narrative at this time still by correspondence with your officers and by exerting your own memory much can be done and it will help me greatly in my undertaking make it as full as you can embracing all circumstances bearing on the campaigns affecting your operations and illustrating the conduct of your division i hope you will be able to get up to see us this spring or summer select the time when you can best absent yourself that you may feel the freer and enjoy yourself the more i wish i were nearer to you all your mother is about the same busy with her needle and her pen and as cheerful as ever affectionately your father r e lee general william h f lee his desire for accounts from his officers of the movements of their commands shows he still intended to attempt to write his campaigns with the army of northern virginia some months later he writes again to my brother and in it he alludes to the dark cloud of the reconstruction days hanging then over the south lexington virginia june eighth eighteen sixty seven my dear son your letter written on your birthday has been welcomed by the whole family and i assure you that we reciprocate your regrets at the distance which separates us although the future is still dark and the prospects gloomy i am confident that if we all unite in doing our duty and earnestly work to extract what good we can out of the evil that now hangs over our dear land the time is not distant when the angry cloud will be lifted from our horizon and the sun in his pristine brightness again shine forth i therefore can anticipate for you many years of happiness and prosperity and in my daily prayers to the god of mercy and truth i invoke his choicest blessings upon you may he gather you under the shadow of his almighty wing direct you in all your ways and give you peace and everlasting life it would be most pleasant to my feelings could i again as you propose gather you all around me but i fear that will not be in this world let us all so live that we may be united in that world where there is no more separation and where sorrow and pain never come i think after next year i will have done all the good i can for the college and i should then like if peace is restored to the country to retire to some quiet spot east of the mountains where i might prepare a home for your mother and sisters after my death and where i could earn my daily bread we will talk of it when we meet this summer i wish to carry your mother to some of the mineral springs where she might obtain some relief but it is hard to know where that can be found she seems now to prefer white sulphur merely on the ground i believe that she has never tried those waters and therefore they might be of service to her if she makes up her mind to go i will endeavour to get her there with one of the girls at least mildred has returned to us looking very well and says she has had a very pleasant tour among her friends and has received a great deal of kindness wherever she has been she seems to be very contented now at home i think you did right to defer your visit to us until you had more leisure i am glad your prospects for a harvest are so good every one must look to his material interests now as labour is our only resource the completion of the railroad to the pamunkey will be a great advantage to you in getting to market what you make and i hope you will put everything to account i hope robert is doing well mary is in staunton where she went a week since to attend miss dribbling's wedding miss mary stuart is staying with us and i believe is to remain until july when her sister belle is to join her the examination of the students has been progressing a week and will continue until the twentieth 
the young men have so far done very well on the whole mr swinton has paid his visit he seems to be gentlemanly but i derive no pleasure from my interviews with bookmakers i have either to appear uncivil or run the risk of being dragged before the public i am always as ever your father r e lee general william h fitzhugh lee the pamunkey was the name of the river on which the white house my brother's estate was situated the railroad from richmond torn up during the war had just been rebuilt to that point swinton was the historian of the federal army of the potomac he spent some days in lexington and i suppose sought from my father information on points connected with his history of the movements of general grant's army my father as i have said before commenced almost as soon as he became the president of the college to improve the grounds roads walks fences etc and systematically kept up this work up to the time of his death the walks about the college grounds were in a very bad condition and in wet weather often ankle-deep in mud as a first step toward improving them the president had a quantity of limestone broken up and spread upon the roads and walks the rough jagged surface was most uninviting and horsemen and footmen naturally took to the grass seeing colonel t l preston riding one day across the campus on his way to his classes at the virginia military institute my father remarked ah colonel i have depended upon you and your big sorrel to help smooth down my walks another day a student who was walking on the grass saw the general not far away and immediately stepped into the middle of the rocks upon which he manfully trudged along a strange lady going in the same direction followed in the student's footsteps and when the youth came within speaking distance my father with a twinkle in his eye thanked him for setting so good an example and added the ladies do not generally take kindly to my walks the buildings also were altered and renovated so far as funds for the purpose permitted he urged the erection as soon as possible of a chapel which should be of dimensions suitable for the demands of the college there were other objects calling for a far greater outlay of money than the resources of the college afforded but he deemed this of great importance and succeeded in getting appropriations for it first he hastened the selection of the site and the drawing of the plans the completion of the work was much retarded owing to the want of funds but his interest in its erection never flagged he gave it his personal superintendence from first to last visiting it often two or three times a day after it was dedicated he always attended morning prayers and all other religious exercises held there unless prevented by sickness whenever i was there on a visit i always went with him every morning to chapel he had a certain seat which he occupied and you could have kept your watch regulated by the time he entered the doors as he thought well of the young men who left his drawing-room by ten o'clock so he placed in a higher estimate those who attended chapel regularly especially if they got there in proper time there was no regular chaplain but the ministers of the different denominations who had churches in the village undertook by turns to perform a month's service the hour was forty-five minutes past seven o'clock every morning except sunday during the session save in the three winter months december january and february when it was one hour later he was the earnest friend and strong supporter of the young men's christian association and an annual contributor to its funds upon one occasion at least he placed in its library a collection of suitable books which he had purchased with that intention in his annual reports to the trustees he always made mention of the association giving an account of its operations and progress End of chapter fourteen chapter fifteen of recollections and letters of general robert e lee by robert e lee jr this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter fifteen mountain rides an incident about traveller the general's love for children his friendship for ex-president davis a ride with his daughter to the peaks of otter mildred lee's narrative mrs lee at the white sulphur springs the great attention paid her husband there his idea of life 
since the arrival of lucy long my father was generally accompanied by one of my sisters in his rides whenever the weather and the condition of the roads admitted of their going it took very severe weather to keep him in though often he could not spare the time for during the winter months the days were very short every monday afternoon there was a faculty meeting and the vestry meetings of his church were held two or three times a month whenever i was in lexington i rode with him and when he was prevented by any of the above-mentioned causes he would ask me to take traveller out and give him a gallop which i was delighted to do and i think i had my revenge for his treatment of me on that ride from orange to fredericksburg in the winter of eighteen sixty two my father's affection for his horses was very deep and strong in a letter written from the springs one summer to his clerk in lexington he says how is traveller tell him i miss him dreadfully and have repented of our separation but once and that is the whole time since we parted i think traveller appreciated his love and sympathy and returned it as much as was in a horse's nature to do as illustrative of his bond between them a very pretty story was told me by mrs s p lee footnote daughter of general w n pendleton chief of artillery of the a n virginia and widow of colonel edwin gray lee c s a and note one afternoon in july of this year the general rode down to the canal boat landing to put on board a young lady who had been visiting his daughters and was returning home he dismounted tied traveller to a post and was standing on the boat making his adieu when some one called out that traveller was loose sure enough the gallant gray was making his way up the road increasing his speed as a number of boys and men tried to stop him my father immediately stepped ashore called to the crowd to stand still and advancing a few steps gave a peculiar low whistle at the first sound traveller stopped and pricked up his ears the general whistled a second time and the horse with a glad whinny turned and trotted quietly back to his master who patted and coaxed him before tying him up again to a bystander expressing surprise at the creature's docility the general observed that he did not see how any man could ride a horse for any length of time without a perfect understanding being established between them my sister mildred who rode with him constantly this summer tells me of his enjoyment of their long rides out into the beautiful restful country nothing seemed to delight him so much i have often known him to give rein to traveller and go at full speed to the top of some long hill then turn and wait for me jogging along on lucy calling out with merry voice come along miss lucy miss lucy lucy long he would question the country people about the roads where they came from where they led to and soon knew every farmer's name and every homestead in the county he often said i wish i had a little farm of my own where we could live in peace to the end of our days you girls could attend to the dairy and the cows and the sheep and wait on your mother and me for it is time now for us old people to rest and for the young people to work all the children in the country round were devoted to him and felt no hesitation in approaching him after they once knew him he used to meet his favourites among the little ones on the street and would sometimes lift them up in front of him to give them a ride on traveller that was the greatest treat he could provide there is a very pretty story told of virginia lee letcher his goddaughter and her baby sister fanny which is yet remembered among the lexington people jenny had been followed by her persistent sister and all the coaxing and the commanding of the six-year-old failed to make the younger return home fanny had sat down by the roadside to pout when general lee came riding by jenny at once appealed to him general lee won't you please make this child go home to her mother the general immediately rode over to where fanny sat leaned over from his saddle and drew her up into his lap there she sat in royal contentment and was thus grandly escorted home when mrs letcher inquired of jenny why she had given general lee so much trouble she received the naive reply i couldn't make fan go home and i thought he could do anything footnote daughters of governor john letcher the war governor of virginia End note. there was a little boy living with his mother who had come from new york 
his father had been killed in our army the little fellow now colonel greer monroe of new york city was much teased at his playmates calling him yankee when he knew he was not one one day he marched into my father's office in the college stated his case and asked for redress the next boy that calls you yankee send him to me said the general which when reported struck such terror into the hearts of his small comrades that the offence was never repeated there was another little boy who was accustomed to clamber up by the side of my father at the morning chapel exercises and was so kindly treated that whenever he saw his distinguished friend he straightway assumed a position beside him at the college commencement which was held in the chapel the little fellow glided from his mother's side and quietly stole up to the platform soon he was nestled at the feet of the dignified president and resting his head upon his knees dropped asleep general lee tenderly remained without moving preferring to suffer from the constrained position rather than disturb the innocent slumberer this boy is now the rev carter jones of the baptist church about this time ex-president davis was freed from the confinement of his prison at fortress monroe where he had been for about two years there was a warm personal friendship between these two men dating from the time they were cadets at west point together and as his unjust and unnecessary imprisonment had pained and distressed none more than my father so his release gave him corresponding joy he at once wrote to him the following letter full of feeling and sympathy lexington virginia june one eighteen sixty seven honorable jefferson davis my dear mr davis you can conceive better than i can express the misery which your friends have suffered from your long imprisonment and the other afflictions incident thereto to no one has this been more painful than to me and the impossibility of affording relief has added to my distress your release has lifted a load from my heart which i have not words to tell my daily prayer to the great ruler of the world is that he may shield you from all future harm guard you from all evil and give you that peace which the world cannot take away that the rest of your days may be triumphantly happy is the sincere and earnest wish of your most obedient faithful friend and servant r e lee though my father would take no part in the politics of the country and rarely expressed his views on questions of that nature then occupying the minds of all nevertheless when he deemed it necessary and to the proper person he very plainly said what he thought the following letter to general longstreet in answer to one from him written about this time illustrates what i have said in this connection and explains itself lexington virginia october twenty nine eighteen sixty seven general j longstreet twenty one carondelet street new orleans louisiana my dear general when i received your letter of the eighth of june i had just returned from a short trip to bedford county and was preparing for a more extended visit to the white sulphur springs for the benefit of mrs lee's health as i could not write such a letter as you desired and as you stated that you would leave new orleans for mexico in a week from the time you wrote to be absent some months i determined to delay my reply till my return although i have been here more than a month i have been so occupied by necessary business and so incommoded by the effects of an attack of illness from which i have not yet recovered that this is the first day that i have been able to write to you i have avoided all discussion of political questions since the cessation of hostilities and have in my own conduct and in my recommendations to others endeavoured to conform to existing circumstances i consider this the part of wisdom as well as of duty but while i think we should act under the law and according to the law imposed upon us i cannot think the course pursued by the dominant political party the best for the interests of the country and therefore cannot say so or give it my approval this is the reason why i could not comply with the request in your letter i am of the opinion that all who can should vote for the most intelligent honest and conscientious men eligible to office irrespective of former party opinions 
who will endeavour to make the new constitutions and the laws passed under them as beneficial as possible to the true interests prosperity and liberty of all classes and conditions of the people with my best wishes for your health and happiness and my kindest regards to mrs longstreet and your children i am with great regard and very truly and sincerely yours r e lee this summer my father paid a visit to the peaks of otter a famous group of mountains in the blue ridge range situated in bedford county virginia he rode traveller and my sister mildred accompanied him on lucy long after visiting the peaks and ascending the summit which is four thousand feet in height he rode on to liberty now bedford city ten miles distant and spent the night at avenel the home of the burwells who were friends and connections of his from there the riding party went to captain buford's about twelve miles distant where they spent the night and the next day the captain was a farmer a great admirer and a staunch upholder of his native state virginia in her fight for constitutional liberty from sixty one to sixty five he had sent his sons into the army and had given of his substance freely to support the troops as well as the poor and needy the widow and orphans who had been left in want by the death in battle of their natural protectors and by the ravages of war in the early years of the struggle my mother and sisters when refugeeing had boarded as they thought and intended at the time at his home but when they tried to induce him to accept pay for the shelter and food he had given them for a month or more he sternly refused his was a patriotism that hesitated at no sacrifice and was of a kind and character that admitted of no self-consideration this trait so strongly developed in him attracted the admiration and respect of my father the visit he paid him was to thank him in person for the kindness extended to his wife and daughters and also for a very large and handsome horse which he had sent my father the last year i think of the war my sister mildred tells me what she can recollect of this ride it is a source of endless regret to us that we cannot recall more his companionship was at all times delightful to his children and on an occasion of this kind invigorated by the exercise inspired by the bright skies and relieved of all harassing cares he became almost a boy again my sister mildred says we started at daybreak one perfect june day papa on traveller i on lucy long our saddle-bags being our only luggage he was in the gayest humour laughing and joking with me as i paced along by his side on quiet miss lucy traveller seemed to sympathise with his master his springy step high head and bright eye clearly showing how happy he was and how much interest he took in this journey he had to be constantly chided for his restlessness and was told that it would be well for him to reserve some of his too abundant energy for the latter part of his trip at midday we dismounted and tying our horses while resting on the soft grass under a wild plum hedge by the roadside ate our lunch we then rode on and soon came to the james river which was crossed by a ferry-boat the ferryman was an old soldier who of course recognized papa and refused payment nor could he be induced to take any further on the road as our horses were climbing a steep rocky ascent we met some little children with very dirty faces playing on the roadside he spoke to them in his gentle playful way alluding to their faces and the desirability of using a little water they stared at us with open-eyed astonishment and then scampered off up the hill a few minutes later in rounding this hill we passed a little cabin when out they all ran with clean faces fresh aprons and their hair nicely brushed one little girl exclaiming we know you are general lee we have got your picture that night about nine o'clock we reached the little mountain inn at the foot of the peaks ate a hearty supper and soon went to bed tired out by our thirty-mile ride our bedrooms seemed to be aloft and the beds were of feathers but i at least slept without turning next morning at dawn of day we set out accompanied by the master of the house and rode for a long time up the mountain-side lucy following closely behind traveller 
finally it became impossible to proceed further on horseback so the horses were fastened to some trees and we climbed the rest of the way to the summit on foot when the top was reached we sat for a long time on a great rock gazing down on the glorious prospect beneath papa spoke but a few words and seemed very sad i have heard there is now a mark on that rock showing where he sat the innkeeper who accompanied us all the way told us that we had ridden nearer the top than any other persons up to that time regaining our horses we proceeded on our second day's journey which was to end at liberty some ten miles distant we had not ridden far when suddenly a black thunder-cloud arose and in a few minutes a heavy shower broke over us we galloped back to a log cabin we had just passed papa lifted me off of lucy and dripping with water i rushed in while he led the horses under an adjacent shed the woman of the house looked dark and glum on seeing the pools of water forming from my dress on her freshly scoured floor and when papa came in with his muddy boots her expression was more forbidding and gloomy he asked her permission to wait there until the shower was over and praised her nice white floor regretting that we had marred its beauty at this praise so becomingly bestowed she was slightly appeased and asked us into the best room which was adorned with coloured prints of lee jackson davis and johnston when the shower ceased and papa went out for the horses i told her who he was poor woman she seemed stunned and kept on saying what will joe say what will joe say joe was her husband and had been like every other man in the country a soldier in the army of northern virginia the shower over and the sun shining brightly we rode along joyously through the refreshed hills and dust-laid roads arriving at liberty in good time and went to avenel the pretty home of the burwells the comforts of this sweet old place seemed very delicious to me after my short experience of roughing it papa was much amused when i appeared in crinoline my hoops having been squeezed into the saddle-bags and brought with me we remained there the next day sunday and the day after rode on some twelve miles to captain buford's the captain in his shirt-sleeves received us with open arms seemed much surprised at my full growth and said why general you called her your little girl and she is a real chunk of a gal he showed us his fine jersey cattle his rich fields and well-filled barns and delighted in talking of the time during the war when mamma mary and agnes paid him a visit he overflowed with kindness and hospitality and his table fairly groaned with the good things papa afterwards constantly quoted his original sayings especially one on early rising which was made on the eve of our arrival when he told us good-night papa asked him what time he must be ready for breakfast next morning well general said the captain as you have been riding hard and as you are company we will not have breakfast to-morrow until sun-up which meant in those june days somewhere about five o'clock after a day spent pleasantly here we started next morning early on our return halting for a short time in buchanan we stopped at colonel edmund pendleton's who then lived there in an imposing white pillared edifice formerly a bank mrs pendleton gave us some delicious apricots from her garden which my father enjoyed greatly we then proceeded on the road to lexington going by the natural bridge where we had another short rest and reached home the same night about ten o'clock after a forty-mile ride shortly after this visit captain buford sent me a fine jersey cow on condition that i would get up early every morning and milk her and also send him a part of the butter i made after my father returned from this trip he began his arrangements for taking my mother to the greenbrier white sulphur springs he hoped that the waters and the change might be of service to her general health even if they should not alleviate the severity of her rheumatic pains about the first of july my mother sister agnes and miss mary pendleton with my brother custis in charge set out for the white sulphur springs my father with professor j j white decided to make the journey to the same place on horseback 
they started a day in advance and were at covington when the ladies travelling by stagecoach to goshen thence by rail arrived there after spending the night at covington the passengers were put into as many stagecoaches as were necessary and the long rough drive over the mountains by callahan's commenced general lee on traveller was at once recognized and when it was found out by his fellow travellers that mrs lee was with him attentions and services of all kinds were pressed on her party and a most enjoyable lunch was sent to the stage reserved for her seeing that the other stages were much crowded while the one reserved for his wife had vacant seats my father insisted that some of the others should join his party which they very gladly did he and professor white went ahead of the stages on their horses at the white sulphur springs the harrison cottage in baltimore row had been put at my father's disposal and the entire party was soon most pleasantly established there mr w w corcoran of washington professor white miss mary pendleton agnes and my father and brother had a table together almost every day some special dainty was sent to his table my mother of course had her meals served in her cottage her faithful and capable servant milly howard was always most eager for her to appear at her best and took great pride in dressing her up so far as she was allowed in becoming caps etc to receive her numerous visitors my father's usual custom while there was to spend some time in the morning in the large parlour of the hotel before taking his ride on traveller after dinner he went again to the parlour and also after tea among the company were many old friends and acquaintances from baltimore who could not sufficiently testify their pleasure in this renewal of intercourse whenever he appeared in parlour or ballroom he was the centre of attraction and in vain the young men tried to engage the attention of the young ladies when general lee was present during his visit a circus came to dry creek a neighbouring settlement and gave an exhibition the manager rode over to the springs came to my father's cottage and insisted on leaving several tickets begging that general lee would permit him to send carriages for him and any friends he might like to take to his show these offers my father courteously declined but bought many tickets which he presented to his little friends at the springs during the morning he rode over to dry creek where the crowds of country people many of them his old soldiers feasted their eyes on him to the neglect of the circus that night a special exhibition was given by the manager to general lee's friends who were taken to seats draped with confederate colors red and white after the return from the circus my father invited a large party to his cottage to partake of a huge watermelon sent him by express from mobile it weighed about sixty pounds and its producer thought the only fitting way he could dispose of it was to present it to general lee every possible attention that love admiration and respect could prompt was paid my father by the guests at the springs each one seeming anxious to do him homage my mother and sister shared it all with him for any attention and kindness shown them went straight to his heart after spending three weeks at the white my father's party went to the old sweet springs where they were all made very comfortable one of the parlours being turned into a bedroom for my mother so that in her wheeled chair she could go out on the verandas and into the ballroom he was taken quite sick there and though he rode over from the white sulphur springs was unable to continue his early rides for some time his room was on the first floor with a window opening on the end of the building one morning when he was very unwell and it was important that he should not be disturbed miss pendleton found a countryman cautiously opening the shutters from the outside she quickly interfered saying go away this is general lee's room the man dropped back saying mournfully i only wanted to see him on another occasion some country people came to the springs with plums and berries for sale catching sight of him on the piazza they put down their baskets took off their hats and hurrahed most lustily for mars bob they were his old soldiers when he acknowledged their loyalty by shaking hands with them they insisted on presenting him with their fruit about the first week in september my father rode back to lexington on traveller 
custis taking my mother and agnes back over the same tedious journey by stage and rail there have been preserved very few letters from him at this time i find one to me full of kindness wholesome advice and offers of aid in which he sends his thanks to the president of the york river railroad for a courtesy tendered him white sulphur springs greenbrier county west virginia august five eighteen sixty seven my dear son i received to-day your letter of the twenty eighth ult enclosing a free ticket over the richmond and york river railroad from its president mr dudley please present him my grateful thanks for this mark of his esteem i am very glad to hear that the road is completed to the white house and that a boat connects it with norfolk the convenience of the community and the interests of the road will be promoted thereby it is a difficult undertaking in these times to build a road and i hope the company will soon be able to finish it to west point i suppose you have received before this the letter from your mother and agnes announcing our arrival at this place and informing you of the company the latter has been much increased and among the arrivals are the dangerfields axles capertons miss bell harrison etc etc i told agnes to tell you how much we wished you were with us and as an inducement for you to join us if you could leave home if you would come i would pay your expenses i feel very sensibly in my old age the absence of my children though i recognize the necessity of every one's attending to his business and admire him the more for so doing i am very glad that you and fitzhugh have so far escaped the fever and hope you may avoid it altogether be prudent i am very sorry that your harvest promises a poor yield it will be better next year but you must continue systematically the improvement of the land i know of no better method than by liming and if you wish to prosecute it and are in need of help i will aid you to the extent of last year or more so make your arrangements and let me know your wishes a farmer's life is one of labor but it is also one of pleasure and the consciousness of steady improvement though it may be slow is very encouraging i think you had better also begin to make arrangements to build yourself a house if you can do nothing more than prepare a site lay out a garden orchard etc and get a small house partly finished so as to inhabit it it will add to your comfort and health i can help you in that too now think about it then too you must get a new wife i do not like you being so lonely i fear you will fall in love with celibacy i have heard some very pleasing reports of fitzhugh i hope that his desires if beneficial to his happiness may be crowned with success i saw the lady when i was in petersburg and was much pleased with her i will get agnes or your mother to tell you what occurs at the springs there are some five hundred people here very pleasant and kind but most of my time is passed alone with traveller in the mountains i hope your mother may derive some benefit from the waters but i see none now it will at least afford her some variety and give her some pleasure of which there is a dearth with us now give much love to fitzhugh all unite in love to you god bless you my son praise your affectionate father r e lee early in september my father sent my mother and sister home to lexington while he mounted traveller and rode back by way of the hot springs healing and rock bridge alum he was detained by indisposition a day or two at the healing and writes to my mother a little note from that place healing spring september twelfth eighteen sixty seven my dear mary i arrived here on the tenth and had expected to resume my journey this morning but did not feel able should nothing prevent i will leave here to-morrow but i fear i shall not be able to reach the rockbridge alum which i am told is twenty-nine miles distant in that event i will halt on the road and arrive there on saturday lie over sunday and reach lexington on monday i am very anxious to get to lexington and think nothing on the route will benefit me as i feel much concerned about the resumption of the college exercises mr john stewart mrs mary and marion mr price and his daughters came over from the hot yesterday to see me the stewarts are there on miss bell's account 
give much love to everybody i hope you reach lexington safely and comfortably and that all are well i hope to see you monday till then farewell very truly and affectionately r e lee it is to be regretted that we have no accounts of these rides the people he met and what he said to them where he stayed and who were his hosts he was very fond of horseback journeys enjoyed the quiet and rest the freedom of mind and body the close sympathy of his old war-horse and the beauties of nature which are to be seen at every turn in the mountains of virginia ah if we could only obtain some records of his thoughts as he rode all alone along the mountain roads how much more it would help us all in our trials and troubles he was a man of few words very loath to talk about himself nor do i believe any one ever knew what that great heart suffered his idea of life was to do his duty at whatever cost and to try to help others do theirs End of chapter fifteen chapter sixteen of recollections and letters of general robert e lee by robert e lee jr this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter sixteen an adviser of young men lee's policy as college president his advice on agricultural matters his affection for his prospective daughter-in-law fitzhugh's wedding the general's ovation at petersburg his personal interest in the students under his care the college exercises were resumed in the last weeks of september my mother and sisters were all back at home the president's work now more in hand began to show results the number of students this session was largely increased and the outlook of the college was very much brighter he had from the beginning of his presidency a distinct policy and plan which he had fully conceived and to which he steadily adhered so that all his particular measures of progress were but consistent steps in its development his object was nothing less than to establish and perfect an institution which should meet the highest needs of education in every department at once and without waiting for the means to be provided in advance he proceeded to develop this object under his advice new chairs were created and professors called to fill them so that before the end of the first year the faculty was doubled in numbers still additional chairs were created and finally a complete system of schools was established and brought into full operation so admirably was the plan conceived and administered by general lee that heterogeneous as were the students especially in the early years each one found his proper place and all were kept in line of complete and systematic study under this organization and especially under the inspiration of his central influence the utmost harmony and utmost energy pervaded all the departments of the college the highest powers of both professors and students were called forth under the fullest responsibility the standards of scholarship were rapidly advanced and soon the graduates of washington college were the acknowledged equals of those from the best institutions elsewhere and were eagerly sought after for the highest position as teachers in the best schools the results were due directly and immediately more than to all other causes to the personal ability and influence of general lee as president of the college so wrote professor edward s joins in an article published soon after general lee's death in the university monthly all of this had not been accomplished as yet but the work was well advanced and the results began to be evident his health had not been strong since the middle of the summer but he never ceased in his endeavor to better the condition of the college and to improve the minds morals and bodies of the young men committed to his charge he writes to me about this time encouraging me to renewed efforts telling me how to better my condition and advising me not to be cast down by difficulties lexington virginia october twenty sixth eighteen sixty seven my dear rob your letter of the tenth did not give me a very favorable account of yourself or your prospects but i have no doubt it was true and therefore commendable we must not however yield to difficulties but strive the harder to overcome them i am sorry for the failure of your crops your loneliness and uncomfortableness and wish it were in my power to visit you and advise with you but you must come up this winter when convenient and we will discuss the whole matter 
fitzhugh i hope will be married soon and then he will have more time to counsel with you i hope between you two you will devise some mode of relief the only way to improve your crop is to improve your land which requires time patience and good cultivation lime i think is one of the chief instruments and i advise you to apply that systematically and judiciously i think too you had better purchase another pair of mules i can help you in these items and if you need can advance you five hundred dollars then as regards a house i can help you in that too but you must first select a site and a plan the first can only be found on the land and the latter might be adopted on the progressive principle commencing with the minor members and finishing with the principal ones as convenience or necessity might authorize if no better can be found how would the present site answer if you are going to cultivate the lower part of the farm it would at least have the advantage of convenience or if you thought it better to divide and sell your farm it would answer for one of the divisions i am clear for your marrying if you select a good wife otherwise you had better remain as you are for a time an imprudent or uncongenial woman is worse than the minx footnote i had written to him that they had destroyed all my hens End note. i think upon the whole you are progressing very well and have accomplished the worst part a failure in crops will occur occasionally to every farmer even the best with favourable surroundings it serves a good purpose inculcates prudence and economy and excites energy and perseverance these qualities will overcome everything you are very young still and if you are virtuous and laborious you will accomplish all the good you propose to yourself let me know if you want the money we are pretty well i am better and your poor mother more comfortable i think than she was last year the girls are as usual and custis is in far better health than he was before his visit to the springs he seems however not happy and i presume other people have their troubles as well as farmers god bless you my son and may he guard guide and direct you in all you do all would unite in love did they know i was writing truly and affectionately your father r e lee robert e lee jr my brother fitzhugh was to be married that autumn this event so soon to take place gave my father great pleasure he was an earnest advocate of matrimony and was constantly urging his sons to take to themselves wives with his daughters he was less pressing though apparently always willing to have another daughter he did not seem to long for any more sons he thus writes to my brother when his engagement was formally announced to him lexington virginia september twenty eighteen sixty seven my dear fitzhugh i have been anxious for some time to write to you to express the pleasure i have felt at the prospects of your marriage with miss bowling but sickness has prevented and i am still so feeble that i cannot attend to the pressing business connected with the college as you know how deeply i feel all that concerns you you may feel assured of the pleasure i derived from your letter to your mother informing her of your engagement i have the most pleasing recollection of miss tabb and of her kindness to me and now that she has consented to be my daughter the measure of my gratitude is filled to overflowing i hope she will not delay the consummation for i want to see her very much and i fear she will not come to see me until then you must present her my warm love and you both must accept my earnest prayers and most fervent wishes for your future happiness and prosperity i am glad that your house is progressing and that your crops promise well i hope that you soon will be able to come and see me your mother i hope has derived some benefit from her visit to the springs her general health is improved but i see no relaxation in her rheumatic complaint the girls are quite well and all send love your affectionate father r e lee general william h f lee the young lady who was so soon to become a member of his family was miss mary tabb bowling the daughter of mr g w bowling of petersburg virginia her father had been very kind to general lee during the eventful months of the siege of that town and his daughter had been often to see him and was a great favourite of his my brother was especially anxious that his father should be present at his wedding and had been urging him to make his arrangements to come 
the sickness to which he frequently alludes in his recent letters had been annoying him since his return from the white sulphur springs up to this time and he now writes proposing that my brother and bride should come to him instead of his going down to the wedding lexington virginia october twenty five eighteen sixty seven my dear fitzhugh i have been wishing to write to you every day since the reception of your letter of the sixth instant but have been prevented by business and sickness i am delighted that your marriage is so near at hand and it would give me great pleasure to attend but i do not think that i could add to the enjoyment of any one i suppose it will take place in church according to the present fashion and i should see very little of you i therefore propose that instead of going directly to the white house you both come up here and spend as much time with us as you can it will give your house more time for completion and i suppose the pretty bride will want to see her old father and mother and what kind of people her sisters are at any rate i want to see her very much and i should be unable to do so in petersburg as she would be surrounded by her old beaux and companions we shall all be delighted to see you and you may go back as soon as you are tired tell me what you think of this plan there is another thing i wish you to aid me in to tell me what agreeable present i can make to my daughter to remind her hereafter of her papa or if i send you a hundred dollars will you get for me something she would like i have been quite sick lately but am better now the rest of the family are as usual and your mother i hope is more comfortable than she was last year i am very glad you have enjoyed good health all the summer and hope that nothing will occur to mar the happiness of your wedding or to postpone it your devoted father r e lee my brother after receiving this ran up to lexington and paid him a short visit his next letter shows that he had yielded to his wishes and had determined to be present at his wedding lexington virginia november fifteenth eighteen sixty seven my dear fitzhugh i received this morning your letter of the thirteenth and am glad to hear of your safe arrival and of the favourable condition of things at your home i was afraid your house would not be ready at the time supposed but i would not delay the wedding on that account you can exist without it we have one here at your service though a poor one i am obliged to you for having arranged about my clothes upon reflection i think it better not to go to the white house and roman coke before the wedding you and robert could hardly pay the necessary attention to business matters with your hands filled with love and matrimony i think of catching up rob and marrying him to some of my sweethearts while i am down so as to prevent the necessity of going down again custis says it will be inconvenient for him to leave here before the time necessary for him to reach petersburg by the twenty eighth and we have arranged to commence our journey on monday night twenty fifth instant at two p m so as to reach richmond tuesday evening remain there the twenty seventh and go to petersburg the twenty eighth i do not think i shall be able to go to the white house at all i should not be able to aid you or rob my only object and would put you to much trouble we are all as you left us and miss you and mildred very much very affectionately your father r e lee general william h f lee so it was all settled satisfactorily my brother gained his point and my father arranged his affairs so that he could absent himself without detriment to his work at the college he left on the appointed day and hour and the morning after arriving in richmond writes my mother exchange hotel richmond november twenty sixth eighteen sixty seven my dear mary we reached here yesterday about four p m after a not uncomfortable journey and found fitzhugh waiting for the important event i doubt whether his house will be finished from his account till january though he thinks it will his plans i believe as far as he can form them are to leave petersburg the morning after the wedding for baltimore where they will probably spend a week gathering up their furniture etc and after that all is undetermined i renewed the invitation for their visit to us but he could not decide robert is expected to-morrow mildred is well and seems to be perfectly happy as she had on last evening a dress about two yards longer than norvell's i saw mr davis who looks astonishingly well and is quite cheerful he inquired particularly after you all 
he is at judge old's no one seems to know what is to be done judge chase had not arrived yesterday but it was thought probable that he would reach here in the ten o'clock train last night i have not heard this morning i will present myself to the court this morning and learn i hope what they wish of me williams wickham is here and will attend the wedding annie will also go fitzhugh is to go out to hickory hill this morning and return this afternoon to pay his adieu mrs caskey was not well last evening the rest as usual and send much love custis is well and i have my clothes i left my sleeve buttons in my shirt hanging up in my dressing-room ask cornelia to take care of them mr alexander said he would send you up some turkeys and colonel johnston that he would help you revise the manuscript it is time i should get my breakfast as i wish to transact some business before going to court give much love to the girls and everybody i hope you are well and will want for nothing while i am away most truly yours r e lee mrs m c lee general lee was summoned this time as a witness in the trial of mr davis but after some delay a nolle prosequi was filed general lee after the war was asked by a lady his opinion of the position and part mr davis had taken and acted during the war he replied if my opinion is worth anything you can always say that few people could have done better than mr davis i know of none that could have done as well on the morning after the wedding he writes to my mother petersburg november twenty ninth eighteen sixty seven my dear mary our son was married last night and shone in his happiness the bride looked lovely and was in every way captivating the church was crowded to its utmost capacity and the streets thronged everything went off well and i will enter into details when i see you mr wickham and annie mr fry john wood and others were present mr davis was prevented from attending by the death of mrs howell the mrs haxall miss enders miss giles etc came down from richmond fitzhugh lee was one of the groomsmen custis very composed and rob suffering from chills many of my acquaintances were present and everybody was very kind regrets were often expressed that you mary and agnes were not present i believe the plan was for the bride and groom to start on their travels this morning but i doubt whether it will be carried out as i thought i saw indications of a change of purpose before i left which i had no doubt would be strengthened by the reflections of this morning i shall remain to-day and return to richmond to-morrow i wish to go to brandon monday but do not know that i can accomplish it until leaving richmond my whole time was taken up by the august court so that i could do nothing nor see anybody there mildred was all life in white and curls i am staying at general mahone's and have got hold of one of his needle pins with which i can do nothing excuse illegibility no one has descended to breakfast yet i received on arriving here yesterday at three p m a kind note from our new daughter asking me to come and see her as soon after my arrival as convenient which i did and carried over the necklace which she pronounced very pretty give my love to all most truly yours r e lee mrs m c lee a special car carried general lee and the other wedding guests from richmond to petersburg he did not enter into the gay conversation of the young people but appeared sad and depressed and seemed to dread seeing the town of petersburg and meeting its people this feeling was dispelled by the enthusiastic welcome given him by every one there general mahone whose guest he was to be met him at the depot with a carriage and four white horses many of the citizens tried to take out the horses and pull the carriage into the town but the general protested declaring if they did so he would have to get out and help them the morning after the wedding he drove out to turnbull's to see an old woman who had been very kind to him sending him eggs butter etc when he had had his headquarters near by during the siege on his return he took lunch at mr bowling's and held an impromptu reception everybody coming in to speak to him that night he went to an entertainment given to the bride at mr johnson's he enjoyed the evening very much and expressed his feeling of relief at seeing every one so bright and cheerful he was delighted to find the people so prosperous and to observe that they had it in their hearts to be gay and happy 
the next morning he returned to richmond he was escorted to the train in the same way in which he had been received all the people turned out to see him leave and he departed amid tremendous cheering my father enjoyed this visit it had been a success in every way his old friends and soldiers called on him in great numbers all eager to look on his face and clasp his hand again the night of the wedding the streets were filled with crowds anxious to see him once more and many to look on him for the first time wherever he was seen he was treated with the greatest love admiration and respect it was with devotion deep sincere and true mixed with awe and sadness that they beheld their old commander on foot in citizen's dress grayer than three years ago but still the same passing along the ways where he had so often ridden on traveller with the noise of battle all around what a change for him what a difference to them but their trust and faith in him was as unshaken as ever a glimpse of his feelings at this time is shown in one of his letters written a few weeks later which i will give in its proper place the day after his return to richmond he writes to my mother richmond december first eighteen sixty seven my dear mary i returned here yesterday with custis robert and fitz lee we left fitzhugh and his bride in petersburg mildred is with them in consequence of being told that the new couple were to leave petersburg the morning after the wedding i had made my arrangements to return here saturday if i had known that they would remain till monday as it is now their intention i should have made my arrangements to stay mildred will come up with them on monday and go to mrs caskey's i propose to custis rob and fitz to remain in petersburg till that time but they preferred coming with me i shall go to brandon to-morrow morning and will take custis and robert with me i propose to return here tuesday finish my business wednesday spend thursday at hickory hill take passage for lexington friday where i hope to arrive saturday as far as i could judge our new daughter will go to baltimore december second and probably return here the following monday fitzhugh will go down to the white house during the week and make arrangements for their sojourn there he can go down in the morning and return in the evening i repeated our invitation to her to visit us on their return from baltimore but she said fitzhugh thought it better for them to defer it till the spring but she would write to let us know i do not think she will come at this time for she is in that happy state which causes her to take pleasure in doing what she thinks he prefers and he i think would like to go to the white house and arrange for the winter i went up to caskey's last evening saw norval but mr and mrs caskey were both sick upstairs the latter is better than when i last wrote and free from pain i paid several visits yesterday evening and took rob with me mrs triplett's mrs peebles mrs branders mrs j r anderson's at the latter place i met mrs robert stannard who looked i thought remarkably well she is living with hugh her son on his farm i also went to mrs dunlop's and saw there general and miss jenny cooper the latter looked remarkably well but the former is very thin they will remain here some weeks i have not seen colonel allen since my return from petersburg but am told that he is better you must give a great deal of love to all with you i am very anxious to get back and i hope that you are all well it is very cold here this morning and ice is abundant good-bye truly and affectionately r e lee the people mentioned here as those he called on were all friends living in richmond with whom my mother had become well acquainted during her stay there in war times there were many others he went to see for i remember going with him he sat only a few minutes at each place called just to shake hands he would say all were delighted to see him from some places where he had been well known he could hardly get away he had a kind word for all and his excuse for hurrying on was that he must try to see so-and-so as mrs lee had told him to be sure to do so he was bright and cheerful and was pleased with the great affection shown him on all sides on the day he had appointed monday the second of december we started in the morning for brandon we took the steamer down james river passing through much of the country where he had opposed mcclellan in sixty two and grant in sixty four custis and i were with him 
he said very little as i remember nothing about the war but was interested in all the old homesteads along the route many of which he had visited in the days long ago and whose owners had been his relatives and friends he expressed great regret at not being able to stop at shirley which was the birthplace and home of his mother before she married he stayed at brandon one night only taking the same boat as it returned next day to richmond they were all glad to see him and sorry to let him go but his plans had been formed beforehand according to his invariable custom and he carried them out without any change spending one day in richmond he went from there to hickory hill thence to lexington arriving there the saturday he had fixed on i bade him and my brother custis good-bye in richmond and returned to my home to my brother fitzhugh after his return from his wedding trip he writes lexington virginia december twenty one eighteen sixty seven my dear fitzhugh i was very glad last night to receive your letter of the eighteenth announcing your return to richmond i did not like my daughter to be so far away i am glad however that you had so pleasant a visit which has no doubt prepared you for the enjoyments of home and will make the repose of xmas week in petersburg doubly agreeable i had a very pleasant visit to brandon after parting with you which custis and robert seemed equally to enjoy and i regretted that i could only spend one night i passed shirley both going and returning with regret from my inability to stop but custis and i spent a day at hickory hill on our way up very agreeably my visit to petersburg was extremely pleasant besides the pleasure of seeing my daughter and being with you which was very great i was gratified in seeing many friends in addition when our armies were in front of petersburg i suffered so much in body and mind on account of the good townspeople especially on that gloomy night when i was forced to abandon them that i have always reverted to them in sadness and sorrow my old feelings returned to me as i passed well-remembered spots and recalled the ravages of the hostile shells but when i saw the cheerfulness with which the people were working to restore their condition and witnessed the comforts with which they were surrounded a load of sorrow which had been pressing upon me for years was lifted from my heart this is bad weather for completing your house but it will soon pass away and your sweet helpmate will make everything go smoothly when the spring opens and the mocking-birds resume their song you will have much to do so you must prepare in time you must give a great deal of love for me to all at mr bowling's to general and mrs mahone and other friends we shall be very glad when you can bring our daughter to see us select the time most convenient to you and do not let it be long distant tell her i wish to see her very much as do also her mamma and sisters your mother regrets that you did not receive her letter in answer to yours from baltimore she wrote the day of its reception and addressed it to new york as you directed the box upon which you inquired arrived safely and was much enjoyed mary is in baltimore where she will probably spend the winter as i am so far from mildred it will be difficult for her to make up her mind when to return so that the whole care of the household devolves upon agnes who is occupied all the morning teaching our niece mildred god bless you all is the prayer of your devoted father r e lee general william h f lee the christmas of eighteen sixty seven i spent as usual in lexington with my father he had been president of the college now a little more than two years the number of professors and students had largely increased the chapel had been built many improvements made to the lecture rooms and halls the grounds improved by the laying out of new roads and walks the enclosures renewed the grass restored to the campus and new shade trees set out over the college grounds the increase in the number of professors demanded more houses for them as a move in this direction the trustees decided to build a new house for the president so that the one he now occupied could be used for one of the faculty accordingly the appropriation of a sum was made and my father was authorized to build according to a plan of his own selection he took a keen interest in this matter and at once commenced designing a new president's house on the lot which had previously been occupied by an old building devoted to the same purpose this house was completed in the summer of eighteen sixty nine 
the endowment fund of the college had been increased by liberal contributions from several philanthropic persons and also by a better investment of the resources already belonging to the institution the fees from the greater number of students also added much to its prosperity his interest in the students individually and collectively was untiring by the system of reports made weekly to the president and monthly to the parent or guardian he knew well how each one of his charges was getting on whether or not he was progressing or even holding his own if the report was unsatisfactory the student was sent for and remonstrated with if that had no effect the parents were advised and requested to urge the son to try to do better if the student still persisted in wasting his time and money his parents were asked to call him home as illustrating how well the president was acquainted with the students and how accurate was his remembrance of their individuality it is related that on one occasion a name was read out in faculty meeting which was unfamiliar to him he asked that it be read out again and repeated the name to himself adding in a tone of self-reproach i have no recollection of a student of that name it is very strange that i have forgotten him i thought i knew every one in college how long has he been here an investigation proved that the student had recently entered during his absence and that he had never seen him he won the confidence of the students and very soon their affections he regarded a mass of petty regulations as being only vexatious and yet by his tact and firmness his discipline became most effective very seldom was there any breaking of the laws he was so honoured and loved that they tried to please him in all things of course there were exceptions i give here some letters written to parents and guardians which will show how he tried to induce these triflers to become men lexington virginia march twenty five eighteen sixty six my dear sir i am very glad to learn from your letter of the thirteenth instant that you have written your son in reference to his neglect of his studies i am sure your letter and the kind admonition of his mother will have a beneficial effect upon him i have myself told him as plainly but as kindly as i could that it was necessary for him to change his course or that he would be obliged to return home he has promised me that he would henceforth be diligent and attentive and endeavour in all things to perform his duty i hope that he may succeed for i think he is able to do well if he really makes the effort will you be so kind as to inform mrs w that i have received her letter of the nineteenth it will give me pleasure at all times to aid her son in every way i can but if he desires no benefit from his connection with the college it will be to his interest to return home very truly your obedient servant r e lee here is another letter showing the patience and forbearance of the president and his earnest desire to help on in life the young men committed to his charge washington college lexington virginia april twenty eighteen sixty eight my dear sir i regret to see from your letter of the twenty ninth ult to the clerk of the faculty that you have misunderstood their action in reference to your son he was not dismissed as you suppose from college but every means having been tried by the faculty to induce him to attend faithfully and regularly to his studies without effect and great forbearance having been practised it was thought best for him and just to you that he should return home the action of the faculty was purposely designed not to prevent his being received into any other college or to return to this should you so desire the monthly reports are intended to advise parents of the progress of their sons and it was supposed you would have seen the little advancement made by yours in his studies and that no further notice was required the action of the faculty was caused by no immorality on his part but by a systematic neglect of his duties which no counsel on the part of his professors or my own could correct in compliance however with your wishes and on the positive promise of amendment on the part of your son he has been received into college and i sincerely hope that he will apply himself diligently to his studies and make an earnest effort to retrieve the time he has lost with great respect your obedient servant r e lee this letter too shows his fatherly interest washington college lexington virginia march nineteenth eighteen sixty eight my dear sir before this you have learned the affecting death of your son 
i can say nothing to mitigate your grief or to relieve your sorrow but if the sincere sympathy of his comrades and friends and of the entire community can bring you any consolation i can assure you that you possess it in its fullest extent when one in the pureness and freshness of youth before having been contaminated by sin or afflicted by misery is called to the presence of his merciful creator it must be solely for his good as difficult as this may be for you now to recognize i hope you will keep it constantly in your memory and take it to your comfort and i pray that he who in his wise providence has permitted this crushing sorrow may sanctify it to the happiness of all your son and his friend mr byerly often passed their leisure hours in rowing on the river and on last saturday afternoon the fourth instant attempted what they had more than once been cautioned against to approach the foot of the dam at the public bridge unfortunately their boat was caught by the return current struck by the falling water and was immediately upset their perilous position was at once seen from the shore and aid was hurried to their relief but before it could reach them both had perished efforts to restore your son's life though long continued were unavailing mr byerly's body was not found until next morning their remains were yesterday sunday conveyed to the episcopal church in this city where the sacred ceremonies for the dead were performed by the rev dr pendleton who nineteen years ago at the far-off home of their infancy placed upon them their baptismal vows after the service a long procession of the professors and students of the college the officers and cadets of the virginia military academy and the citizens of lexington accompanied their bodies to the packet boat for lynchburg where they were placed in charge of messrs wheeler and baker to convey them to frederick city with great regard and sincere sympathy i am most respectfully r e lee End of chapter sixteen